So for today's video, I want to talk about the design decision of either making a single skill that does many things versus splitting up that single skill's individual effects into separate different buttons. Separate different, oh god. Which while that might sound very irrelevant and just like, why are you talking about this? This is something that actually is going to impact a ton of different jobs that I am especially greatly interested in with Endwalker coming. And this is far from an exhaustive list. There are far, far many more examples than this. These are the ones that are intimately in my mind right now. The first up is going to be Scholar Seraph in the Sage's Toolkit is divided into Haima and Panheima ability. Warrior's Blood Wedding is split in the Dark Knight's Kit into the Blackest Knight Shield and then a 10 percent mitigation in oblation. Scholar's insanely powerful coveted ability recitation is split into the sage's Zoe and then Rizomata skills. And do note, this is very far from an exhaustive list, but I just want to cover a few cases and now I want to get into the discussion. So first up is Scholar Seraph is an exceptional ability by any and all standards. Often slept on, this fairy is a genuine powerhouse. Seraph is going to last 22 seconds and will cast Seraphic Veil every 3 seconds, so roughly you're looking at 6-7 casts. And Seraphic Veil is going to heal for 1 80 potency and then produce a barrier of the same potency so roughly you are getting 360 potency per so 7 multiplied by 360 is going to be 2520 hps assuming all barriers are used of course consolation is going to be a 250 potency heal that does the same amount in barriers and that can be cast twice in succession and so each of those constellations and you get the two of them is going to be 500 potency each and that's going to be a total of 1000 potency of hps so taking the seraphic veil taking the constellation both charges of it that is going to be 3520 hps cooldown every two minutes and do note two minutes because that's going to be very core in any discussion related to this now the Sage has their Haima and Panheima abilities, two very separate ability buttons for the Sage. They are going to produce a upfront 150 potency barrier, which when it breaks is replaced by another 150 potency barrier, and that is going to happen a total of five times. If that barrier, however, doesn't break, for each stack it is going to do a burst heal at the end for 150 potency per unused stack. So roughly for each of these abilities, it's going to be 6 multiplied by 150 equals 900 potency of barriers. So theoretically, if we take 900 and then 900, because they're basically the same effect, we get a total of 1,800 potency of barriers. And I do want to note this, this is worthy of a more in-depth analytical video, but Seraph replaces the fairy outright, and so HPS values are going to be bloated in single target in this discussion. Sage's Cardia will still proc under the Haima effect. I just want to make that super clear because people might be misled and be like, oh wow, 3,520 is so much higher. It will be a touch higher probably in actual practice, but it's not going to be this wide of a gap. Now to the point, now that I've explained the baseline, this gets us immediately into the question of how much are you willing to trade off for this level of control? Seraph and Constellation, while very powerful, must be used in very specific 20 second windows, and then they are gone for two minutes. Haima and Panheima, however, offer a level of control where you can theoretically place Haima on your tank, let that tank be whacked into the ground, and note Haima is single target just in case I didn't say it super clearly before, and Panheima is AoE. But back to the tank example, when that tank is, the Haima effect is fully depleted on that particular tank, then you can be spicy and then immediately follow up with a Panheima cast, which will then, interestingly enough, be another powerful barrier for tank. No less than Haima, it's just the same effect but an AoE. Arguably, you could probably wonder kind of like how I am just like, why is the cooldown of Haimas the same as Panheim if they're the same effect, but once AoE? Probably literally just because they're meant to be exact correlates of Seraph. But getting more to my point of control is that you can cleave these cooldowns into separate 60 second intervals even if you'd like, a flexibility that you cannot have with Seraph in spite of her undeniable strength. In fact, one big strength of Seraph is that Haima and Panheima cannot be stacked. Seraph is going to be volleying out Seraphic Veil at the same time as she's doing Consolation. Arguably, in a burst cycle, Seraph's going to be far stronger than individually Haim or individually Panheima. Really this gets into the question of which one would you choose. During something like Terminal Relativity, yes, a Panheima will be extremely disgustingly effective, absolutely. But with Seraph, you are getting the Constellation, you're getting the two charges of that as well, as well as the Seraph is pumping out Seraphic Veil at the same time, which is undeniably, a, especially with something like Terminal Relativity, no Echo Minimum item level is going to be something that you will 100% want. But Take a raid mechanic that may successively hit a tank. You may want to enhance the tank's resilience with the Seraphic Veil as an HPS boost, but just the tank with that. 
that may come at a ridiculously different time that you want to protect the entire party from something like terminal relativity or shiva ice spikes during e12s phase one now seraph will be a brutally effective tool during either of those individually but if these mechanics are under two minutes apart you need to pick and choose where exactly to use her and that is exactly that pinch right there is what makes the separation of these skills seraph basically being broken apart into her components her aoe versus her single target components in the stage makes it intense Intensely easier to have the tool on hand that you need at the time like I need single target to be boosted I need AoE to be boosted. That is the power of this control. And my next topic is going to be recitation versus Zo or Rizomata, which are going to be the Sage skills. Recitation is a very, very powerful skill in this game. This is one of the most iconic healer abilities in the entire game. Recitation, when you use it, the next spill or ability crits. It can be spell or ability. So on GCD or off GCD. Note that is very important. But it's going to be critting, as well as you can use either X Cog or Indom without an Aether Flow Cog. Crit Indom is one of the most powerful burst heals in the entire game. You'd be very hard pressed to find any experienced healer that would say otherwise. Now for the Sage, the Sage took Recitation in its hands and it just cut it right down the middle into two different halves. Zo is going to be the first one we're talking about and that doubles the curing potency of the next spell cast which makes it an obvious shoe in for the absolutely degenerate strong Numa ability. We're not even getting into the rest of the possibilities with Zo, but it impacts only spells not abilities and so this is actually going to be a drawback for Zo. It's so the Sage essentially cannot replicate crit Indom with say Zo. Then the Sage's Indom equivalent called Exocol. So it is slightly less powerful, one could argue, since crit Indom is so strong and so well loved. The Sage will not have a crit Indom. We'll have an Indom but it won't have a crit in Tom guarantee. Now Rizomata, however, flat out gives you an Adder Skull with no strings attached, no limitations, and compared to the limitations Recitation has for either an Xcog or an Indom, really this no strings attached, no limitations is beautiful on Rizomata. I'm actually a huge fan of this. In fact, this is actually such a strong skill that I genuinely believe that it is an ability that you can justify to use off of cooldown, and that is actually my general recommendation with Rizomata when I'm talking about my ultimate Sage guide. That is explicitly unless the healing is so minimal in the content that you're doing that you literally cannot justify spending any Adder Skull. I view this very much the same as like all of the time that you have this on cooldown, I mean off of cooldown, and you're not using it, you're basically throwing away a charge. And I'm not playing Scholar for so many years, I am not willing to throw away a charge. I will justify that on the Sacred Soil. For Sage, that's going to be Caracol. But this is another example of my point before. Would you rather take one 90 second cooldown that is undeniably super tremendously strong? As I said, good luck finding an experienced healer main that will say Recitation in Dom is not broken. It is strong. Well, maybe they won't say it's broken in the current climate of the game because we have neutral sect, but you know what I mean. But would you rather have that one single powerful ability, or would you rather crack it in half into two separate 90 second cooldowns that I'd argue you approach their use case differently. While I didn't want to make this a Sage Scholar video, um, <laughs> I'm going to just do a little bit here. Recitation in Dom, I generally view, generally speaking, as a burst emergency heal unless your team explicitly plans around its use, which you should in a static. You, generally speaking, in Pugs, will use it when you need it. Same deal with Zo in my viewpoint. But Rizomata, I view as a pop-off of cooldown, I don't want to lose those extra charges ability, which is flat out adding to your pool of OGCD heal options as a Sage. Now we're at the end of the video, I want to do a quick rundown. With the case examples out of the way, let's hash it out. First of all, this is just my opinion and my pros and cons, and this will probably expand when I think about it even longer as Endwalker progresses. But cons of dividing a single button into multiple others is first up is clearly button bloat, and controller players especially might get overwhelmed with the different key bindings. This is something I already hear in my comment section from controller players. Um, secondly is a big problem, in fact, for new players too, because more buttons and more interactions and things to think about makes it a lot less clear on how or when to use things. It adds a level of nuance on top of a level of nuance when you're already playing healer. Thirdly is for examples like Seraph versus Haima or Panheima is that Haima and Panheima do not stack and Seraph is volleying out Seraphic Bale at the same time as Constellation making Seraph a more powerful burst cycle because Haima and Panheima do not stack. Now in terms of the pros I can really only think of one and it is a huge one. Control. That is the name of this kind of game, and I like to make sure that I have the tools when I need them at any particular point of the fight. Skills like Haima and Pinehama and Zo and Rizumata are very specific, very focused tools. This position allows me to spread out and decide and pick and choose when I really need when and where. 
Ham and pineapple. <laughs> Haim and pineapple. Okay, I waited to the end of the video. I had to say Haim and pineapple. <laughs> Anyhow, we've reached the end of the video, and I want to know your thoughts, so let me know that in the comments. Anyhow, take care, everyone. I hope you have an amazing, amazing day, and stay safe out there.